Hello guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna answer competency two questions and answers. I'm gonna use the video for competency two. I already read the questions over there. I'm just gonna use it again. And after that, I will answer the questions. Let's listen to the questions first. Let's, let's, let's look questions. at the questions. Question number one. A third grade teacher finds that her class includes a number of English language learners ESLs, who have varying levels of English language proficiency. As the school year begins, the teacher is considering ways to adapt instruction and assessment to meet these students' needs. The teacher plans to modify lessons and materials for the English language learners in ways that will address their language needs and, fac and facilitate learning. In making the modifications, it is most important for the teacher to create modify lessons and materials that a. present simplified, less academically demanding versions of the content and concepts that are included in the original lessons, b. include only those words and language structures that are already familiar to the English language learners, c. Focus mainly on acquisition of basic knowledge through teacher presentations and guided practice. D. Address the same instructional goals and objectives as those addressed in the original lessons. We'll listen to the question number one. Well, let's look at that and try to answer it. In this question, we are given a scenario with the third grade teacher trying to adapt instruction and assessment to meet the students needs coming from different variety of English levels. This question is asking us to find what is the most important thing in creating modified lessons and materials for these students. A is wrong because we cannot lower academic level for students. A is not the answer. We cannot lower them. B is also wrong because it says that we should create stuff for students who already know there is nothing new for them C is wrong because of the word basic knowledge which lowers academic expectation for students let's look at D D is correct because we should use the same instructional goals for all students for academic expectation this one is representing equally let's look at the other question A third grade teacher finds that her class includes a number of English language learners who have varying levels of English language proficiency. As the school year begins, the teacher is considering ways to adapt instruction and assessment to meet these students' needs. When assessing the English language learners in his classes, the teacher can best ensure accurate assessment of the students' learning by A using various assessments including written, oral and performance measures to allow students multiple opportunities to show what they have learned b permitting the students to determine on their own when they are ready to be assessed in particular areas of instructional content c assessing the students frequently for example on a weekly basis so that intervals between tests are short and the amount of material assessed at any one time is minimized. D. Placing equal emphasis on the teacher's assessment of students' learning and students' assessment of their own learning. Pause the video here and try it yourself. Let's look at the answer. Uh, this question is asking us to find the answer about how the accurate assessment should be for students of varying English levels. The answer is we have to differentiate our assessment with multiple ways allowing students multiple opportunities. So the correct answer is A. Question number three. Four-year-old Tamara, whose parents were recently divorced, divides her time each week between her parents' homes. Early each morning, Tamara is left with a babysitter who drops her off at preschool at 9. Tamara stays at the preschool until noon. Two days a week, Tamara is taken to a playgroup after preschool. For the remaining three days each week, 
Tamara goes to another babysitter's house until one of her parents picks her up at the dinner time. Tamara's preschool teacher is considering how to meet Tamara's needs. Based on the information provided, the teacher should give the highest priority to ensuring that a preschool staff encourage Tamara to make one or two very close friends at the preschool with whom she can interact on a regular daily basis. B. Tamara's preschool program is characterized by predictability in teacher practices and daily classroom routines. C. Preschool staff regularly find ways to reinforce with Tamara basic concepts related to families and their functioning. D. Tamara's preschool program sets aside a block of time each day for children to express and explore their feelings. Pause the video here and try it yourself. In this question, we have 4-year-old Tamara with the following situations of her own. This question is seeking an answer to the highest priority that her teacher should give. A is wrong because teacher doesn't give any support for or any contribution to her highest priority. B is correct because her school environment should be predictable and based on daily routines for her to be safe. Predictable and daily classroom routines. We found the correct answer. C and D are not the correct answer. Let's go to question number four. Question number four. A sixth grade classroom includes students with special needs who regularly spend time in the school's resource room. In planning and organizing instruction for this class, it is most important for the teacher to take steps to ensure that the students with special needs a. Focus on learning experiences that emphasize collaborative rather than individual work. B. Do not experience feelings of social isolation from their peers. C. Spend most time engaged in self-selected activities geared toward their own strengths and preferences. D. Have ample opportunity to interact with others who have similar needs. Pause the video here and try it yourself. In this question, we have a 6th grade class including students with special needs. We're looking for an answer about the most important stuff for a teacher in preparing instruction. Answer is like the most accurate answer for this question in this regard is not to make those students feel isolated. That's the most important thing in the class for a student. They need to work together with other students, so the correct answer is B. Let's look at question number five. First of all, we're going to listen and answer. Question number five. A high school teacher's classes include students from different cultural backgrounds. The teacher notes that relations among diverse student groups are sometimes tense and include occasional verbal conflict. The teacher can best respond to the observed tensions by using which of the following approaches? A. Reinforce student recognition of the benefits of cooperation by setting up a system in which some members of the class receive meaningful rewards for exhibiting positive behavior during specified periods of time. B. Use a seating arrangement that separates students from different groups and organize group work to accommodate students' preferences regarding peers with whom they would like to work. C. Work with students to create a set of clearly defined guidelines for behavior and interactions in the classroom and insist that all students consistently adhere to the guidelines. D. Implement a grading system in which student attitudes towards peers are as important as performance on classroom projects and assessments in determining students' course grades. Pause the video here and try it yourself. In this question, we have a high school class with students from different cultural backgrounds and they occasionally have verbal conflicts. We are looking for an answer about how the teacher should approach this situation. 
The teacher should be able to resolve the conflict with the following ways. Setting a good role model for students. Establishing a discussion between students. Correct answer is going to be C. The teacher is trying to work with students to create guidelines for behavior and interaction. This is related to setting a good role model. Let's go ahead and look at question number six. Question number six. An English teacher plans to assign a major research project to students in a mixed ability class. The teacher wishes to implement the project in a way that will build confidence and positive expectations among the class lower achieving students. Which of the following approaches is most likely to help the teacher achieve this goal? A. Break the project into a series of manageable subtasks and be available to provide students with ongoing assistance in planning and accomplishing tasks as needed. B. Allow students substantial choice in determining the research topics they wish to pursue and the timelines and procedures they wish to use to complete their projects. C. Give students a checklist emphasizing process skills and have them complete the checklist as the project progresses. D. Pair lower achieving students with higher achieving peers and encourage the students' peers to use flexibility in carrying out their respective project roles. Pause the video here and try it yourself. Let's go ahead and try to find the answer. This question is about how we can help build confidence and expectation for lower achieving students while assigning a major task. We need to break the task into manageable and doable chunks for students to carry out and give continuous help during the project. So the correct answer will be A. Let's go to question number seven. Question number seven. A high school teacher is planning a research activity that will require students to collect various types of information on the internet, organize and analyze the information they collect and create multimedia presentations to share what they have learned with their classmates. The teacher is aware that some students in the class have had limited opportunities to learn to use technological tools. The teacher can best respond to the needs of those students by using which of the following strategies? A. Incorporate flexibility into the schedule for completing each phase of the research so that all students may have extra time for particular tasks. B. Offer students options for conducting their research with mainly paper-based texts and for developing presentations that do not require computer technology. C. Provide students with a carefully organized, comprehensive set of written instructions that they may refer to as they work on the various phases of their projects. D. Have students implement the activity in small, heterogeneous groups structured to give all students access to equipment and opportunities that allow them to play a role in all activity components. Pause the video here and try it yourself. In this question, the teacher is planning a research activity for students, but some students are limited to technology tools. We are searching for an answer about how the teacher best responds to this situation. Teacher has to provide some opportunities to all students no matter what. Timeline should it be changed not to create isolation? So the correct answer is going to be D. When you look at the choice, if it says all students, probably that's going to be the answer. That's going to be a hint for you. Let's look at question number eight. Question number eight. Julia Robinson is a new physical education teacher. She is planning for her co-ed eight grade classes, each of which is expected to include about 40 students. To promote an equitable environment in co-ed classes such as hers, it is most important for Ms. Robinson to A. 
specify distinct expectations for male and female students that reflect gender-related attitudinal and behavior differences. B. Select a variety of activities that together address the interests and strengths of both males and females. C. Develop separate criteria for evaluating the performance of male and female students for each activity. D. Avoid selecting any activities that are likely to appeal more to students of one gender than the other. Pause the video here and try it yourself. This question is seeking an answer to how Ms. Robinson should create an equitable environment in co-ed class. Teachers should establish the same expectation and criterion regardless of the gender. So when we look at the answer choices, D is the most suitable to our answer. The answer is D. Question number nine. To best ensure that all students in a fourth grade inclusion classroom receive quality instruction, which of the following should lesson plans always include? A. Individual assignments for each student and planned time for whole class reteaching. B. Activities at varying difficulty levels to allow for students to make self-directed choices. C. Extra time for reteaching and needs-based modifications of student activities. D. Blocks of time for small group instruction for students with learning disabilities. Pause the video here and try it yourself. This question is focused on how the lesson should be for the quality instruction for fourth grade students. The answer is going to be explained like this. We need to adapt our instruction to our students' needs. So the correct answer is C. Most of the answer is related to all students' needs. Let's look at last question, question number 10. Question number 10. A first grade teacher has readers who are below grade level, each at a different level. In planning individualized instruction, which of the following is the best first step for the teacher to take? A. Providing an assessment to identify students' reading strengths and weaknesses. B. Incorporating daily drills for students to practice reading skills. C. Having students pulled out of the classroom for small group reading instruction. D. Developing students' oral language and writing skills. Pause the video here and try it yourself. This question is primarily concentrated on the very first step to take in creating individualized instruction for students who are below grade level. Let's explain the answer. We need to do something first to determine the level of students and shape the instruction accordingly. So the correct answer will be A. So many questions are in PPR test related to student strengths and weaknesses. Thank you guys for watching.